Welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2021 Chevy Suburban, courtesy of Turner Chevrolet in Harrisburg, VA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so I wanted to check this one out today. It has been completely redesigned for the 2021 model year. Now bigger than ever, believe it or not. Just when you thought the Suburban couldn't get any bigger, it did for this year. And of course, I'm going to be testing out that cargo space along with absolutely everything else about this one. So what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels available for the 2021 Suburban. First one being the LS starting at $52,995. LT for $57,795, RST for $61,095, Z71 for $63,195, then there is the Premier for $66,575, and lastly the High Country, which actually is the one we have today, starting at $73,595. And by the way, that was all pricing for the rear wheel drive configuration. If you wanted to add four wheel drive, simply add $3,000 to any of those trim levels with the exception of the Z71. That actually comes standard with four-wheel drive. But so then taking into consideration all of these trim levels, there are actually two different engine configurations for the Suburban. First one being a 5.3 liter direct injected V8. This is going to be standard on all trim levels, but the high country that we have today. But this particular engine configuration puts out 355 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, 383 pound-feet of torque available at 4,100 RPM, power sent to rear wheels or all wheels through a 10-speed automatic transmission. Zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 7.7 .7 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 15 in the city, 19 on the highway. But so then there is the other engine configuration belonging to the high country that we have today being a 6.2 liter direct injected V8, 420 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, 460 pound feet of torque available at 4,100 RPM. Again, sent to rear wheels or all wheels through a 10 speed automatic, slightly quicker to 60 of course on this one. MPG numbers 15 in the city, 20 on the highway surprisingly. But so then before we do any kind of acceleration test in the new Suburban, I do want to mention there are some drive modes available including normal, sport, off-road, and towing. Essentially adjusting things like the shift points and throttle response more or less. But so now having mentioned all of that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway here. I know this is a beast of an SUV so I'm kind of curious what's going to happen here. But let's go ahead and put it to the test. Let's do a quick little acceleration test here and let's see how quickly we can get this new 2021 Suburban up to speed. All right, this looks like a good enough straightaway for me in three, two, one. Oh my goodness. Did not expect that. Wow. Holy cow. Okay, absolutely 100%. No issues with merge onto the highway. Dang. Must have been that four wheel drive system. I don't know, but this thing glued to the ground when you hit the gas and it's it was almost like an electric acceleration to a certain degree. That was much more than I expected. That was wonderful. Well done, Chevy. This thing is a beast of an SUV. I 100% didn't expect that. That's why I'm actually so surprised, but that was awesome. I like that. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So as expected, you will find four wheel disc brakes coming standard. When it comes to that 60 to zero stopping distance, that is going to come in at 127 feet, which is pretty respectable, quite honestly, for the size of the Suburban. Honestly, there's three row SUVs out there that stop in 130s, even 139 feet. So 127 is pretty dang good. But having said that, when it comes to the braking feel, it is squishy. It is definitely quite squishy, which honestly, it isn't enough to dissuade me from buying a Suburban, but it's definitely not what I'm used to. It's unlike any other braking feel that I've tested really, and I've said this in previous reviews of the Tahoe and Suburban before, it's just a squishier braking feel. I guess it's just more luxury like you could say, but having said that, that 60 to zero number definitely puts my mind at ease because 127 feet for the size of this Suburban is definitely nice. So I will say that. But then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension. In the back, independent long arm four link rear suspension, 
and Chevy really thought out the suspension components of the Suburban, I will say that, because there is a magnetic ride control suspension coming with the Premier and the High Country. It's gonna be optional on most other trims if you wanted it, but essentially what that does is it monitors each shock absorber individually, not only soaking up the road imperfections, but also tightening up the suspension during heavy cornering, really giving you the best of both worlds. So as we are about to hit these back roads up here, it is going to be tightening up that suspension as I am going around the turn, so give me a little better handling, a little more peace of mind, I guess you could say, but really that is a heck of a suspension component to put on an SUV like the Suburban, so I love that Chevy did that. In addition to that, there is an air ride suspension, which is going to be optional on the Z71 trim level and up, so you can get it on the Premier and the High Country. It is not going to come standard, but it is going to be there for you. Essentially, if you wanted the very smoothest ride possible, go ahead and go with the magnetic ride suspension along with the air suspension suspension as well. That is going to give you the 100% smoothest ride humanly possible. But when it comes to that air suspension, it actually gives you up to four inches of suspension travel. There's actually gonna be a button where you can manually raise and lower the suspension as well. But other than that, the suspension is automatically going to tailor its best, most effective ride height at any given time. Although you can manually adjust it, like I said, if you want it to. But having said all that, when it comes to ride quality without the air suspension, with it just having the magnetic ride control, I will say it is plus Plenty nice, definitely smoother than most three row SUVs that I drive out there. So it's pretty much as expected. A man magnetic ride suspension, I've tested tons of those in the past and they really do make a world of a difference when it comes to ride quality. So that's definitely something you're gonna want in a Suburban, I will see that. When it comes to steering feel, it's actually tends to lean on the heavier side, which I like. I was kind of expecting a lighter steering feel, being that this is a large SUV and typically that is what you find, but it is kind of a heavier feel to it, which is a good thing because it better helps point you in the direction that you wanna go. A little better feeling of control over a beast of an SUV like this. So that's definitely a good thing in my opinion. When it comes to cabin noise, definitely quite quiet now on these back roads. I do want to say there was a little bit of noise as you guys probably heard when I first started the video. I was driving over some bridges in Harrisburg, but other than that, it's pretty much as expected, I should say. So really no issues there. There is going to be acoustic laminated glass on every single trim level as well. So that's going to help deaden that exterior noise as well. So lastly, touching on visibility, I could see, well, pretty much as expected for the size of an SUV. It is a beast of an SUV, but I do like how they, of course, did not taper down the back of it because if they were to do that visibility would be absolutely horrendous in the suburban so having said that it's pretty much as expected it's just fine in my opinion rain sensing windshield wipers actually come standard on every single trim level of the suburban i love that it's essentially just like automatic headlights whenever the suburban detects any kind of rainfall or even mist it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you so it's just one less thing you got to worry about there that's always a good thing head up display is going to come on the high country that we have here today Today. It's going to be optional on the premium, but having said that it is a fairly large head-up display And it is very bold as well. I absolutely love it. It's very high quality some head-up displays You don't get that but with the Suburban This is one of the better head-up displays that I've seen actually in quite a while So it's projecting my speed as well as the speed limit onto my windshield right now It of course is also going to project any kind of safety features when necessary and some navigation information if you were to set that up too So definitely a very nice head-up display and that's going to assist, of course, with visibility as well. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2021 Chevy Suburban. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new completely redesigned 2021 Chevy Suburban. This thing looks like such a beast. Let's go ahead and start up front. Let me start actually with the ground clearance of the Suburban here. Eight inches is going to be the standard setup. However, if you were to go with that air suspension that's optional on the Suburban here, you can actually get up to 10 inches of ground clearance. So if you know you're gonna be going on the back roads, perhaps you can actually raise that up manually and that's gonna help you out a little bit there. But to the sides, LED headlights are going to come standard on every single trim level across the board. That's wonderful. Automatic feature is going to come with that as well. Of course, when it starts to get dark out, they will turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights, also standard on all trims. When it comes to that front fascia, it's actually going to differ amongst the trim levels, I guess as expected there. Different badging is gonna come on different trim levels. For example, let me show you guys this here. You can see that high country lettering found within one of the crossbars there. So that's just a little 
little example, Z71 badging, of course, is going to be found on the Z71 trim level, so it is going to differ slightly when it comes to that. And since I mentioned it, actually, when it comes to that Z71 trim level, you will actually also get a high approach angle in the front with skid plates, red tow hooks, two red tow hooks in the front as well, and some black badging with that one, for example. The bow tie logo, instead of being gold, is going to be black on the Z71, but most other trims are going to give you the chrome finish that you're looking at right now, and actually the high country is going to give you a little bit of a copper accent within that chrome front grille as well. Let me show that to you guys. I don't know if you can see it. You should be able to see it. There is a little bit of copper accenting found on top of the chrome portion of that front grille. So I kind of like it. It definitely goes well with our brown exterior that we have here today. We'll say that. Then down in the corners, you guys can see there's front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination. A little better aerodynamic to help assist with MPGs, although this thing still is a tank, so MPGs are still gonna be less than you would normally find on other SUVs just because of the size of this thing. But let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the Suburban here. But so now since we are around to the side, black roof rails are going to come standard on the RST and Z71 trim levels. Of course, you can get a satin chrome finish to those roof rails as well, like on the high country that we have here today. Rear privacy glass is going to come standard on all trim levels as well, along with black assist steps also standard on all trim levels. I will say they are going to differ slightly depending upon the trim level that you go with. For example, on this high country, when you open the door, those black assist steps are going to swing down for you as opposed to some of them being static on the lower trim levels. So they won't swing down. They're just already going to be there for you essentially. But also wanted to mention there is some fender badging dependent upon the trim level that you go with. Again, that's going to differ. Like on the Z71, you're going to get it on that front fender. High country, you're also going to get that as well. Then taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors for all trim levels. They are also heated for all trim levels and they do get LED integrated turret signals as well. Another little accent I liked on the Suburban here is there is some satin chrome trim on the door handles themselves. And of course you got the Suburban lettering found on the front doors as well. And taking a look all the way to the bottom when it comes to that wheel configuration, 18 inch aluminum alloys coming with the LS and LT trims. Then you jump up to 20 inch machined aluminum alloy wheels for the RST Z71 one premiere and high country that you are currently looking at right now. And those wheel designs, of course, will differ amongst the trim levels, but the size itself will be the same with those four. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the Suburban here. And so now since we are round back, let me start up top rear spoiler with an integrated brake light will come standard. Rear window wiper as well, but you may be asking yourself, where is the rear window wiper? It's not actually on the glass. And that's kind of a cool design feature. It's actually tucked away up under that rear spoiler. So it actually swings down rather than swinging up like most other three row SUVs out there. So I do actually like that. Suburban lettering spelled out horizontally on that back tailgate as well. LED taillights do actually come standard on every single trim level. So a little better illumination at night so somebody is less likely to rear end you. That is always a good thing. And I do actually really like the taillight design too. It does include some Chevrolet badging within the taillight. I found that was a pretty cool little added touch by Chevrolet. So I do want to mention that to you guys. But now making our way all the way to the bottom again, the exhaust setup is going to differ amongst the trim levels. Typically, you're going to find just a single exhaust outlet pointing down towards the ground. However, on this high country that we have today, it is a brushed aluminum dual exhaust setup with quad tips. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. <laughs> All right, so now since we are around back of the Suburban, when it comes to that rear lift gate, it is a manual lift gate for the LS trim level only. However, if you go with the LT trim level and up, of course, it is a power lift gate. When it comes to opening that rear lift gate, there is a button. There is actually two buttons on the key fob. There's a button to open it higher and a button to open it kind of midway. There's also a button on the lift gate itself. So either way is perfectly fine. Once opened up, this is where the Suburban really truly shines. Cargo capacity behind that third row comes in at 41.5 cubic feet. On just about all other three row SUVs out there, it's gonna come in at approximately 20 cubic feet, really. So 41.5 is absolutely amazing. So I absolutely love that. For comparison's sake, if you were comparing this
this to the Tahoe. Behind that third row for the Tahoe, that's going to come in at 25.5 cubic feet. So a substantial difference if you were to go with the Suburb, and I will say that. Behind that second row, when you fold down that third row, that is going to come in at 93.8 cubic feet, which is still most than a total number for all other three row SUVs out there for the most part. Do want to also mention the cool, one of the cool things about the high country that we have today to actually fold that third row down. There of course are some power buttons back in the cargo area itself, but you can actually also do it from the driver's seat. I've never seen this before. Maybe I've overlooked it in previous reviews, but on actually the ceiling, if you're sitting in the driver's seat, if you look up to the ceiling, there's actually two buttons where you could fold those third row seats down and they fold flat into the floor. I absolutely love that. It reminds me of when like you're going to Lowe's and you're picking up mulch and you want to fold that third row seat down so they can put mulch in there. But with this, you don't actually have to get out and manually fold down the third row. You can just stay in the driver's seat and just press these two buttons. It's pretty cool. But then when you fold all of the rows down to the Suburban, that total cubic feet number actually comes in at 144.7, which is dang impressive. Again, for comparison's sake, if you were comparing this to the Tahoe, Tahoe comes in at 122.9 cubic feet, which honestly is like the old Suburbans. That's still very impressive, but 144.7 is basically unheard of these days. That's crazy amount of space. So if you have a large family, if you go on a lot of road trips, this is definitely where you're going to want to be at when it comes to cubic feet. So I was mentioning folding down the seats being a power setup. It is a manual setup actually if you go with all trims but the Premier or High Country. High Country and the Premier are the only two trim levels that are going to give you those power folding rear seats. So don't really need it honestly. It's just a little added luxury I guess you could say. Also while we're in that cargo area I do want to mention of course you do have grocery bag hooks back there. There are cargo tie down anchors. There's also a little bit of in-floor storage back there as well and it's not that deep quite honestly but it is going to be there so that's kind of nice you could store maybe a tire inflator kit back there or perhaps a snow ice scraper as well back there so that's pretty cool there's also an outlet you could charge up your drill back there if you wanted to as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to the third row legroom which is still impressive coming in at 36.7 inches so for reference I am even six feet tall this is how much space I had back there I was able to fit gotta love it most three row suvs for adults there's no way you're fitting in the third row so gotta love that the suburban gives you that option you can also find cup holders back there of course and there are actually some phone charging ports back there too so that's pretty cool and in case anybody was wondering about ventilation in this one because that is important if you got kids in the back especially there is rear ventilation of course coming standard on every single trim level that can be found on the roof or the ceiling of the suburban here for every single row so you do get it in the third row as well so I wanted to mention that, but making our way to the second row now, second row legroom comes in at a very impressive 42 inches and that's luxury like legroom essentially, gotta love that. Again, for reference, I am an even six feet tall, very easily was able to fit in that second row. Phone charging ports coming standard once again for all trim levels. You will also have the option once again to charge up a hair straightener or a drill in that second row as well. Heated second row seats come with the premier and high country trim levels actually and that feature is going to be optional on the Z71 and RST trim levels if you wanted to spoil those second row passengers a little bit there. And you got to love the captain's chair setup and I can see latch anchors within that second row as well. Of course, you can strap in the car seats there if you wanted to. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the front seats of the Suburban here. Cloth seating is going to come with the LS leather seating every other trim level of course 10-way power adjustable front seats coming with the lt trim level and up that's how you're going to get that memory settings once again for the lt trim level and up heated front seats for the lt trim level and up so lt is kind of the sweet spot where the features really start to kick in i guess you could say heated and ventilated front seats for the premier and high country trim level so didn't want to mention that as well but having said that those 10-way power adjustable front seats with lumbar support i should say they're completely comfortable once you add the lumbar support you're pretty much good to go so i can definitely see myself taking the suburban on long road trips for that particular reason seating is plenty comfortable for me then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for every single trim level actually even the ls that's pretty cool heated steering wheel is going to be available we do happen to have it today that was a pretty cool thing when i first hopped in the high country trim level here 
All right, so but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Chevy logo on the one side, and when you flip it around, lock, unlock that button to pop the rear hatch, and of course, a remote start as well, which by the way, does come standard for every single trim level across the board. Gotta love that. Perhaps warming up the Suburban on a cold winter day here in Pennsylvania, perhaps. But anyways, push button start also coming standard across the board. So all I'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there. And so but then once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is to your right. There is a fairly large digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display. Simply use the steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel. It's gonna give you different information like how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's your oil life, there's your tire pressure, there's how long you've been driving for, some safety features, radio information, the list goes on basically. And there is also, of course, a digital speedometer you can display up there as well if you wanted to. And it also does give you the speed limit on those gauges as well. So if you didn't get the head up display, that speed limit indicator is going to be found on the gauges there so did want to mention that but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality on this one panoramic power sunroof is going to be optional for most trims of the suburban we do happen to have that option today it is letting in so much more light for this video so i am very appreciative for that reason typically now i'll mention an overhead sunglass holder but there actually isn't an overhead sunglass holder because the suburban does it so much cooler than that to the right of the infotainment screen there is actually a sunglass holder but it is hidden it is tucked away and it is a very soft interior to that sunglass holder so it's kind of like a little hidden storage area there for your sunglasses you can open and close that by simply pressing in on the silver part of that little sunglass holder opening thing so i found that pretty darn cool i always like secret compartments like that so that was pretty cool wireless phone charger coming with the lt trim level and up that's going to be found just in front of the dual cup holders there tri-zone climate control is going to come standard on every single trim level meaning both driver passenger and rear passengers can all set their own temperatures. That's definitely nice as well. Bright sill plates coming with the LT trim level and up. Universal home remote, AKA garage door openers can be found on the ceiling of this one for up to three different garage doors. So that's gonna be there for you as well. Again, just in front of that, you have those two buttons to fold down that third row, as I was mentioning earlier, I found that pretty cool. Of course, on the high country here, we do have wood trim that's gonna be found on the doors just above the passenger side glove box. It kind of runs through the infotainment screen there a little bit as well it's a pretty cool look to it absolutely love the brown interior on this high country trim level I will also say that I've seen in other reviews people saying the interior quality isn't all that great but I swear to you when you get in the high country at least and you add that brown interior I absolutely love it that was the first thing I said to myself actually when I got in the suburban the interior quality is dang good now having said that I probably would have added a couple more things like perhaps a suede headliner that would have been nice when you're spending 70 grand at least in the high country trim level that would have been pretty cool to add a little extra luxury to this one also maybe some ambient lighting as well wouldn't mind seeing that either so that would be pretty cool also just in front of that wireless phone charger you have a 12 volt power outlet USB charging port and another phone charger within the center armrest there is an absolute ton of space one of the biggest cargo areas within the center armrest i've ever seen i feel like there's actually an sd card slot in there that's pretty cool usb charging port phone charging port as well there's a little removable tray that can slide forward and back as well and on the back side of this center armrest i did want to mention there's a little led light i've never seen that i don't think usually the lighting is within the uh the cargo area but in the Suburban, it's on the back side of the center armrest. I think that's kind of pretty cool. It's different. I like different. I don't know. That's pretty cool. I like that. But overall, there is a little bit of plastic here and there, but it's pretty much as expected. Every vehicle has a little bit. So overall, when it comes to interior quality, I'm actually kind of impressed. It's not the very best that I've seen, but having said that it is definitely more than i expected i will say that but now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display tech display is pretty cool on the suburban 10.2 inch color touchscreen display actually coming standard across the board even the ls trim level is going to get this large infotainment screen you gotta love that it gives you bluetooth and audio streaming also here's the big one for this one wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay for all trim levels. That's a big one because you don't then therefore have a USB connection going from your phone to the Suburban creating disgusting ugly wires. So you gotta love that it's wireless here. I do. 
I absolutely love that because that means you could display navigation up on that 10.2 inch screen without having to actually purchase a factory navigation system as long as you have the data for it, of course. So that's pretty cool. If you wanted a factory navigation system, it is going to come standard on the Premier and High Country trim levels. That is how you're going to go ahead and get that. You can also check out your weather information up there as well. And of course, your radio settings as well. When it comes to the sound systems of the Suburban, it is going to differ substantially amongst the trim levels. Six speakers coming with the LS is pretty much as expected there. LT, Z71, and RST is going to give you a nine speaker Bose sound system. So definitely a decent jump up there. That is pretty nice. And lastly, the Premier and High Country is going to give you a 10 speaker Bose sound system. So we do, of course, have that 10 speaker sound system here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> Actually, not as much bass as I would have expected 10 speaker Bose sound system to have, but having said that, the clarity was 100% on point definitely a very nice sound system for the suburban i have a feeling the nine speaker bose sound system is going to be nearly just as good so really either sound system is going to be fine the ls is going to be meh but the other ones are going to be just fine but last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display at least is when you do put the suburban in reverse and by the way let me mention the buttons for drive park reverse all of that can be found just to the left of the infotainment screen you simply lift up underneath of those buttons. That is how you're going to put it in reverse or drive or press down on park if you wanted to put it in park. So that's gonna be a little bit different than most other vehicles out there actually right now. But once in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you. 360 degree monitor is going to only come with the high country that we have today. So of course that is what you're looking at right now. And as always that is going to lead us into safety. And so to start front side, side curtain airbags as expected. Again, in the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for those who are car seats, rear child door locks back there as well. Tire pressure monitoring system also comes standard. That's more of the boring stuff these days, but some of the advanced safety features that's going to come standard on every single Suburban is going to include automatic emergency braking, a following distance indicator, forward collision alert, front pedestrian braking, and rear parking sensors as well. Now, having said that, if you were to go with the Premier or High Country, you actually get a ton more as well, including front and rear parking sensors, lane change alert with side blind zone alert. That's gonna be the little car icon in the side mirrors, letting you know when a vehicle is in your blind spot that's especially useful in a larger SUV like the Suburban. Lane keep assist with those two trims, lane departure warning, and rear cross traffic alert for those two trim levels as well so the most safety is going to be found on the premier and high country of course but overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the suburban i do like the look of the redesign it looks very nice love the amount of space on this one just when you think chevy couldn't make the suburban any bigger they have and by the way the suburban i believe has been around since the 30s i think i remember seeing so essentially this vehicle is legendary it has been around for quite a while that's another thing i wanted to mention suspension setup on this new suburban at least is absolutely amazing the magnetic ride control is great the air suspension is going to be even better but i can speak to the magnetic ride control that we have here today it definitely makes for a very smooth ride so i love that as far as room for improvement on the suburban the braking feel is still a little bit soft for my taste at least but it's pretty much as expected and again having said that 127 feet from 60 is pretty darn impressive for the size of this so that kind of makes up for that soft braking feel in my opinion knowing that it's going to have no issue stopping when you really need it to another thing is perhaps some ambient lighting if chevy can put ambient lighting on their camaros i don't know why they didn't put it on the suburban i think if you have kids in the back especially they're going to appreciate the ambient lighting if not the driver up front but anyways suede headliner also would have been nice a little better interior quality but having said that the interior quality is definitely more than i came into this expecting so love the brown interior and the wood trim but anyways let me know what you guys think of this new suburban in the comments section below i'm curious to see i always like reading your comments of what you guys think that is about it for this one having said that feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you want to see what's coming next to the channel be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you want to see more car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold